All right, guys. Um, today is just going to be a uh, Q4 business planning worksheet. We just came off of our quarterly meeting where we all did a deep dive into mapping out our numbers and what we're trying to close for the quarter, getting contract and stuff like that. And so what we want to do is kind of continue off of that and piggyback off of that and come up with a game plan of how we're going to hit those numbers, right? Because it's one thing to just say like, hey, I want to close X amount of deals. But we want to boil it down to like, what do you have to do every single day? And what do you have to do every single week? Um, because sometimes that number can look far away, right? Like if your number is six deals or 12 deals, it's a lot harder to picture closing 12 deals versus what do I have to do on a daily or weekly basis, right? So that's what we're going to talk about today. And what we want to do is make it as easy as possible for you guys to figure this out. So it's going to require a little bit of math, but then we have like a little cheat little cheat code to just help you figure these numbers out quick all right and so you guys are going to write as we talk i'll go through the sheet and then we'll spend a little time writing and we'll check on everybody and make sure everybody's good to go sound fair and feel free to stop me guys if you guys have any questions sound fair fair enough okay so here's what we got, guys. Uh, let me see if I can zoom in on this a little bit. Um, what we figured out is this. Um, whatever number it is you want to get in contract, I want you guys to follow me with how we're coming up with this math. Whatever number of deals you want to get in contract, it's really just a math equation, right? Because it's one thing to say like, hey, I want to get two deals a month. Okay, well, if you want to get two deals a month, that means you need to meet with certain people. That means you need those people that you meet with, you need to get X amount of those to sign an agreement with you, buyer agreement, listing agreement. Out of those ones that you sign, certain of those we're gonna get into contracts, certain of them will fall out, cancel, reschedule, roll over, whatever that might be. Um, in order to meet with people, you have to set X amount of appointments, right? And you know that when you set appointments, some people show up, some people don't, some people reschedule. So it's really just a math equation, right? And if you want to set X amount of appointments, well, what do you need to set appointments? Dial. What must you have coming in to set appointments? Pipelines. Leads, opportunities, right? Whatever that might be, it really doesn't matter. So I want you guys to really look at this as it doesn't matter what leads you're going after, whether you're taking Zillow Flex, whether you're prospecting, whether you're door knocking, whether you're working open houses, you need leads, right? Leads equal appointments appointments equal clients that you meet with clients that you meet with equal clients that you sign clients that you sign equal clients that you get in contract and before leads in order to get leads what do you need to get leads we're just looking at this like as a big picture a source prospecting what you need is marketing basically right it's the general category marketing um whether you're paying for marketing whether marketing is being provided for you, whether you're working in an open house, whether you're posting on social media, that's all forms of marketing so that you can generate appointments, generate leads, which are you going to generate appointments from. Um, if you're doing Zillow Flex, that's paid marketing. You're just not paying for it. You're paying for it on the back end, right? But Zillow is spending millions of dollars to advertise online so that people can click on their website. And so I want you guys to understand these concepts as a business owner it's really simple when you think about it that way. I need a market, however I market. From those marketing, I'm gonna get leads. From those leads, I'm gonna book appointments. From those, I meet people, I sign people, I get deals in contract, all right? When we just look at our business like that, guys, it takes all the compli complicated stuff out of the equation. Yeah, can you say, hey, well, I gotta get better at knowing the contract, or I gotta get get better at my skills or knowledge or any of those things, of course, those are all gonna help improve your metrics um, and um, improve some of these numbers. But at the very, very fundamental, you just need to know like how the lead flow process works, right? And when you understand that, then, it, then you start to look at the business a little bit different. You start to look at the business as, hey, leads are leads, right? Yeah. Doesn't matter really where they come from, I just need to make sure I'm getting enough leads. And then you start to figure out, okay, well, what sort of leads do I like to work? What lends to my personality? Am I a prospector? Do I like jumping on the phones and I'll sit there and make calls? Raise your hand like if you like, if you like the battle of jumping on the phones and making calls and booking appointments. Okay, three, four. 
Uh, raise your hand if you'd rather have leads come to you and then you more respond to people. Okay. Some of you guys didn't raise your hand. All right. Um, raise your hand if you'd rather pay money, like if you had money and you'd rather invest your own money so that you're maybe not having to sit on the phones all day and try to look for leads and you have leads coming to your inbox. Now you're just responding to people, right? So you see how there's different ways, right? Raise your hand. Like if, if you're the type of person that just likes networking and talking to people and you rather go out there and door knock because you just like being in front of people and conversating and happy go lucky and be outside. Like there's some people that are like that, right? And it's okay. And so you gotta, which what I want you guys to realize is like, there's not only one way to do it. Of course, we have a way that we do it here on our team, a, a way that we follow that has, has worked for years and years, but it's not the only way. There are some variations within our group, right? Yeah. Some of you guys are doing some of your own stuff. Um, let's talk about social media. Raise your hand if you like being on social media. You like creating content, putting yourself out there, you know, posting, DMing so that you could try to build, get people to respond to you, right? You like the creative aspect. Some of us do, right? Okay. Well, Gia, real quick. I mean, when I look at that, guys, any type of marketing, anything that you choose to do, right? I like what Eric is saying. You know, there's so many different ways to market. Find a way you like doing it. Go, go all in on that. But ultimately, I don't care how you market, you have to pick up the phone and call the lead back. Yeah. Whether you door knock, whether you network, where you did an open house, right? So I, I really want to make sure that concept is consistent it's not you know it, it doesn't go from lead to deal no right it goes from lead and then you have to contact that lead and provide value to them yeah you're absolutely right whatever lead generation method you choose you still have to follow up and yes. and convert these leads right and so i want you guys to understand the difference between lead generation versus lead conversion lead generation is all the different ways that i just named right you pick pick your poison right or you're doing a combination of a few but however you get that lead, whether it's from an open house, door knocking, prospecting, whatever, you still need to convert that lead. And that conversion starts with the conversations yes. over the phone, text, email, showing value, doing a killer presentation in person, right? All those things so that you can now make them a client, right? And so there's no way you're going to avoid the prospecting part or the lead follow-up part or the picking up the phone and texting and working in your CRM. How they get to your CRM that there's different ways but once they're in your crm there's only one way it's just follow up follow up follow up deliver value follow up keep doing that until you move them down the line right and so um when you understand that you understand what i want you guys to realize and ask yourself is what is the game that i'm playing right what's the game that i'm playing like if you had to sum it up into one sentence mauricio what's the game you're playing bro when it comes to Closing deals and lead generation and stuff. Game I'm playing is consistently following up. Okay, that's part of it, right? Say providing consistent customer service. Okay, that's part of it, right? That's the part of the conversion part. But if you had to put the pieces of the puzzle together, like everything we just talked about in one description, the game, what's the game you're playing? Let's see if anybody's following me. Okay, let me give you guys the answer, right? Maybe you're not catching my drift. The game you guys are all playing is how do I get in front of as many people as possible, right? And when I get in front of them, how do I deliver value and how do I stay in front of them and convert them at the highest level possible? That's the game you're playing, Yeah. right? Basically, right? It doesn't really matter. So when you think about it that way, it's like, remember what Steve said, the reason he has so many deals, what was the number one reason he had so many deals? Yeah, he's taking all of that. He takes all the opportunity he can get. Yeah. So he understands the game he's playing. I need to get in, in front of as many people as possible. If it's seven o'clock at night, if it's 10 in the morning, if it's on the weekend, if it's on a Saturday, if it's on a Sunday, my game is get in front of as many people as possible because that's going to lead to those numbers, right? I get in front of as many, that leads to converting them, that leads to signing them, that leads to getting them in contract, right? And so if, if, if you don't understand that, guys, then you're going to fight the process, right? You're going to fight the process because you're always going to like try to do what's the easiest, you know, the path of least resistance. But you got to just remember that's the game you're playing. And, and I like that, Ricky, just to kind of really reinforce that it's once you guys, once we know what it takes 
now there's no excuses. We have to execute on what it is. Yep. Right. We actually have to apply ourselves. And I think that's really important to understand because if if you don't like calling people, then you shouldn't do real estate, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm not just if you don't like calling people, if you don't like presenting, if you don't like giving value, if you don't like doing those things, then this may not be the field for you. Right. Well, let's read. Let me let me let me rephrase that. Right. You don't have to like what you do. <laughs> but, you do but are you willing to do it? There right. I like that. Today was leg day, guys. This morning I hit legs this morning. Right. My legs were like all oh, shaking after. I don't like getting up and hitting legs, guys. But I know like if I want to improve my physique and stay healthy and all that stuff, I got to wake up early. I got to go in there. I got to hit legs, you know, doing squats, doing freaking deadlifts. I, I didn't like it. But I know that's what I must do. If I'm trying to stick with my goal of, you know, staying in shape and stuff like that, right? I don't necessarily like getting hung up on when I call people. Yeah. I don't necessarily like knocking on doors when it's hot, right? I don't necessarily like, you know, dealing with different personalities, you know, and some people are cool, some people are rude, all those different things. I don't necessarily like that. But what I do like is I like the paychecks. I like the lifestyle. I like the, the rewards that real estate has given me. I like all the, you know, the people I get to work with. I like all of those things about that. So I must do the stuff that I don't like to get the things that I do like, right? And so, right? Some of you guys don't have to like hitting the phones, right? And that's the thing. Just imagine if all we did was things that we liked, right? Like my kids would just eat chips all day. Can't eat chips all day. Gotta eat your fruits and vegetables, right? They like ice cream. You can't have ice cream for breakfast. Sorry, right? But if you eat a healthy meal, maybe you get ice cream later, right? Like it's part of life, guys, right? It's, it's part of being disciplined. It's doing the things that we don't like to do because we know that it's in the big picture. It's going to get us the things that we want, right? And so I, I encourage you guys to look at it that way. So next yeah, time. I like that Enrique doing it because, again, guys, that goes back to mindset, right? Enrique always starts his meetings off with mindset. And to me, that is the mindset. Once you know what the rules of the game you're playing, now you get a choice whether you want to play that game or not. Yep. And then you get a choice if you want to play it at a high level, right? Yep. And so do more of the things that are uncomfortable, the things that you don't like, guys, and it's going to build that mindset. It's going to build that skill set. You posted something today, uh, Shri. I like what you posted on your, your IG. What did it say? Difficult means not impossible, right? Just because something's difficult doesn't mean it's, it's not impossible, right? Um, I like that, right? Um, I posted something that I heard this morning. I was working out and I was watching this Tony Robbins thing. And he said, God, what, what it was. Let me pull it up again. I want to make sure I don't butcher it. He said, will your resolutions ever become real if you don't have the rituals to back it up? Right? Your resolutions, the things you're trying to accomplish, your New Year's resolutions, all those things. Will those ever become real if you don't have the daily rituals to back that up? You're not doing the things every day. Your goals and your dreams, is, it's not going to become real, right? Um, it's all about the mindset, guys. Okay, so let's uh, run through these numbers. So average conversion rates. Jeff, some? Thanks, Shri. Let me see. I don't see her. I don't see her. Tell her to try to log in again. Um, okay, conversion rates. These are very average guys, unless you're like a superstar, I would stick with the average, right? I would stick with the average conversion rates on these numbers, um, unless I would just stick with the average guys, right? Because especially with the market and things changing and stuff like that, it's better to be a little bit more conservative with your numbers than to like just go off best case scenario. Um, so what we're, what we're looking at guys, I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger view, full screen, okay. Okay, so these are the conversion rates, right? However many appointments you set, you're only going to meet with about 60% of them. So if you set 10 appointments, you'll end up meeting in person probably about 60%. Why is that? Why? Just throw it out. Maybe they had something else that came up. Um, maybe they weren't serious. Yeah, people cancel. People reschedule. People weren't serious. People changed their mind. People had an emergency, whatever that might be, right? So if you set 10 appointments, you're probably going to meet six in person. Yeah. Out of those six that you meet in person, right? It's a 60% rate. 
Um, appointments met to sign. If you meet uh, six people, you're probably only going to sign, get 25% of them to work with you, right? Because you're going to meet some people and like they're not qualified. You guys don't hit it off whatever your agent, fees yeah. are too much they have an agent you name it right all these different reasons so you're probably only about a 25 percent met to signed getting them to sign right sign an agreement listing agreement buyer agreement whatever it might be to move to the next steps right now out of the ones that you sign are you guys closing every single person you guys sign no you guys get people to sign and then they cancel or you can't get them in contract or they change their mind or you get the listing it doesn't sell whatever it might be but the ones that you actually sign you're going to close a higher percentage of those right because they've already gone down the rabbit hole right down the different steps and now they're willing to work with you now you're actively you know showing homes you're actively marketing their property whatever that might be so you'll probably close about 75 percent of the people that you sign right but to get those people, right, you went through a bunch of people who canceled and rescheduled and didn't meet with you, right? Now, so if we know those numbers, then we can quickly do the math and say, okay, how many appointments do I need to set to get one deal in contract? And I'm not even, there's something else that I'm not putting in here. Deals that get in contract, there's a percentage that fall through. Has anybody ever got a deal in contract and it fell through? Yep. Yeah. Yep. It's probably like maybe 15% fall through. That's what you're saying in contract. Yeah, but we're going to focus on getting deals in contract right now, right? Because we, if we made it all the way to getting them in contract, it's a pretty good chance that they're going to, it's going to go through. There are those cases here and there, 10, 15% that maybe fall through, but maybe we get them in contract again, or we get a buyer on there. It's a listing. We take the offer, the, the offer falls through. We put it back on the market. We're back in contract, right? So um, I'm not really going to put that in the equation here, but I just want you to know that even if you get it in contract, it's not done until it commissions in your hand basically but for this sake of this exercise we're going to focus on getting deals in contract right now so if we do the math i can go 60 percent. i'm going to show you how i'm doing this if i just take my calculator i go 60 percent, and i multiply that by 25 percent. okay and i multiply the 25 percent by 75%, it's 11.25%. So that means my appointment set to deals in contract is 11.25%. I rounded that down to 10% because 10% is an easy number, right? 10, 11, whatever it might be, right? It's about 10%. So the appointments you set, there's about a 10% conversion rate to getting that deal in contract, okay? You guys follow me? You guys follow, right? So for, so for 10 deals, um, for appointments. 10 appointments, you get one deal. One That's deal. Kind of right That's kind of the math. And, that, and he, remember, guys, yeah. what Enrique mentioned before, it's, um, this is like the average, right? Your skill level might, might be different. Your lead source might be different. So yeah. This is a benchmark, of, an average of what we, we're, you're aiming for. Question. So, like, based on, on this formula, I don't want to do two deals. I need to be setting 20 appointments in that month. You're following me. There you go. And we're going to get to that, right? That's what we're going to work out, right? And so remember, the variables are going to be like, okay, where are my appointments coming from? If they're coming from strangers, the conversion rate's lower. If I'm getting referrals, the conversion rate's higher, right? But I don't want to go off best case scenario. I want to kind of go off averages, right? So 10% is a good number. So that means 10 appointments equals one deal in contract. So if you're trying to get one deal in contract a month, you got to book. 10 appointments right and now that i know that now i could build my schedule around that now i could build my activities around that because I, I can say okay well if my if i'm doing prospecting on the phone if i'm calling the pond how long do i got to jump on the pond to book one appointment and then how many days do i got to come in prospect if i'm taking zillow flex leads where the appointment's pretty much being set like it's really easy to book the appointment but then sometimes it's harder to convert those right but i'm meeting more people you start looking at it that way. If I'm posting on social media trying to get leads, you know, how do I gauge that? Like how many actual leads am I getting? And then how many of those are turning into appointments, right? And so this is where you start to analyze your business. Like where are my deals coming from? What's, what are the easy, the low hanging fruit, right? 
what are the harder ones, right? Some some of them are easier, like Zillow Flex is easier. It's easier to get in front of people. Would you guys agree, right? But it might be harder to convert them because they're strangers. So you got to be good when you meet them, right? And you got to pay a referral fee to Zillow. But that got you right in front of people probably a lot faster than if you were to just go work open houses or door knock if that was your only other source, right? Um, getting referrals is great. But how many, like, how can you count on getting referrals? Can you count on getting referrals? Like, unless you have some sort of system in place, right? Or you have this big book of business, you can't really count on referrals, right? Um, so that's where you got to start thinking of your business as different pillars. You can't just bank on one lead source. You have to have, just like when you're investing in, you know, investing, right? What do they say? Diversify your portfolio. There's a reason they say diversify your portfolio is because some things might hit more than others depending on the season, depending on the economy and all those different things. What we teach you guys is you want to have a balanced business. You want to be going after your SOI to generate referrals. You want to be jumping on flex or online leads because those are easier at bats. And then you also want to be doing something where you're going out there and maybe going after listings, whether you're prospecting, whether you're working open houses, whether you're, you know, you're door knocking strategically to get those right. And having kind of a combination of those is going to give you a more balanced business. Right. Um, okay. So now this is where you guys are going to start filling this out. So we all wrote down our number, right? At the quarterly meeting. Those of you at home guys, just write on a piece of paper. You can write this number down. How many deals and contract do you want to get in Q4, but divide that up per month? Cause we're just going to go on a month basis right here. To make, we're trying to keep it simple. We're trying to look at what do I got to do every month, and then from the month I can break it down to week, right? So if your goal was to get three deals in contract in Q4, that's one per month, right? Now, what I'll tell you, if your number is an odd number, you should round up. If your number is like one and a half per month, I would be rounding that number up to two. Um. So everybody, write their number down. Mm -hmm. So some of you guys might write one per month, some of you guys might write two, some of you guys might write three, um, whatever that might be. Okay. One and a half, right? I'd round that up to two. Um, okay, next number. How many clients must you sign to hit your contract number, right? So now we're going signed. We're going to do the math here just for so you guys can learn this. But the cheat code is just 10 appointments equals one deal contract, right? Like we already figured that out. But I want you guys to understand how to run numbers, right? Because it's important you know how these things work. So how many clients must you sign to hit your contract? So if we know it is signed to contract, it's 75%. You're going to take your number. So if my number is one per month, divide that by 75%. That means I need to be signing 1.3 people to convert 75%, right? So I'd round that number up. I'd round it to two. I need to sign two new clients, two new buyers or two listings or whatever that might be, right? Okay. Everyone got their number, their sign number. I'm just going to make sure everyone's will stop, right? We'll go through each one and make sure everyone knows their number. Okay. Now, to hit your sign number, how many clients must you meet to hit your sign number? So your sign number um, met to sign is 25%. So whatever the number that you wrote on number two on your sign number so if you have to sign two for example divide that by 25 percent two divided by 25 percent two divided by 25 percent so how many people must you sign i'm sorry how many people must you meet in order to hit your sign number right So let me write on here so you guys can see this. Actually, this might be a ease. So if I want to get, let's say mine's two a month, right? How many deals do I need to get in contract a month? I'm going to write two. 
how many must I sign to hit my contract number? Right? So if I'm going to go 2 divided by 75%, 2.6, right? Round it up to 3. So I'm going to use the number 3. How many clients must I meet with to hit my sign number? So if I'm going to sign 3, I'm going to sign 25%. So I'm going to go 3 divided by 25%. I got to meet with 12 people. Now, how many appointments do I need to meet knowing that 60% of my appointments are going to cancel or reschedule to meet with 12 people? So I'm going to go 12 divided by 60%. 20. I need to set 20 appointments, right? And if you look at the math, guys, right, like 10 appointments equals one contract. So I want you to see how we came up with that, right? So if I wanted to close two, to get two in contract a month, I need to set 20 appointments. Um, okay, let me know if we're all just there. Let's stop right there, right? Okay. Now, take that number of 20, right, and divide that by four. 20 divided by four. Because now it's how many appointments must I set per week to hit my number? Five. I need to set five, right? You guys follow me? Because now this is five. So this is 20 per month. Divided by four equals five per week. Let me know if anybody needs help. Okay, so what's your guys' number? Really quick, let's go around the room. Um, how many deals in contract, that's what I wanna know, per month, and how many appointments must you set per week? Maudie. So two in contract a month, and per week I should be setting five appointments to meet that. Okay, five. Anybody else? Oh, um I did decimals, so I bought 1.4 deals a month. So in order to do that, I gotta I gotta sign two people a month um, with eight and set at least 13 appointments. How many per week do you gotta set? Three set three appointments a week. So three times four would be twelve, right? Yeah. You sign you get one. Year. Same, exactly there. same goal there. Okay, numbers are the same. Same, same here. Over here. How many appointments must you set? Yeah. So if we know if we know my my met is sixty percent of the appointments I set, so I'm going to take met whatever this number is, and I'm going to divide it by sixty percent. Right. So what was your met number? So you got to meet six people. Divided by 60%. So that means you need to set 10 appointments. That means you want one, one deal a month, right? Yeah. 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 One, right? Yeah. Okay. yeah. So that means you would be 10 appointments per month. Divide that by four. 2.5. So you need to be setting two to three appointments a week, basically. Right? I would push the number for three. Mm -hmm. I would round that number up. Because rounding it up ensures you're going to hit your number, right? Going on the lower end, you're leaving it up to chance. Um, Shri and Mai, what do we got? Same numbers? What's your number? How many deals in contract per month? One? Divided by four? So about four appointments a week, okay? You guys follow me, right? You see how like simple this is getting, right? Is it is it easier to see, like to see how to hit your goals when you're just making it the simplest of numbers, right? Um, what about you guys at home, Antonio or Shelly? If you guys are following along at home, what's your number? How many deals in contract? I wanna know this number, how many deals in contract? And then I wanna know this number here. Uh so I my number is uh, three. Three, uh, no. So three is like for the quarter. So one deal okay. a month. So one okay. deal a month and ten appointment per month. Okay. How many per week? Uh, three appointments. 
three appointments a week gets you a little over 10 a month, right? Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Antonio, you there? Yeah. So I want two a month because uh, I want six for this quarter. Um, how do you do the uh, the clients must I sign to hit that number? So client signed would be. Let me see. You would go to in contract. I'm sorry. Appointment signed to in contract would be this number here. So 75%. So divided by, take your number in contract and divide that by 75% or 0.75. Okay. So it would be 2.6 or, or, or rounding up to three, right? Three, correct. Okay. And then how many clients must you meet with to hit your goal? 30. So in, in order to sign three, you're gonna you're gonna divide that by twenty five percent. Divide okay, divide. So twelve. Twelve. Okay. Now the twelve, in order to meet twelve people, you're gonna divide it by sixty percent because you're only meeting with about sixty percent of the appointments you set. Okay. So that's gonna give you divided by sixty percent would be hold on, divided by sixty percent. Twenty. Twenty. Okay. And now 20 appointments in a month, divide that by four weeks is how many per week? 10, no wait, uh, 10, uh, five. Five, right here. Yeah, five. Okay, cool. Everyone's on, on point, right? We know our number per week. Okay, now here's something I want you guys to look at. Um, where does your business come from? Agent generated versus team generated. Some of you guys may know, some of you guys may not know. Right. Some of you guys haven't done enough deals yet to really know that number. Some of you guys have, and right, and you can see, okay, all my leads are coming from the team. I'm only getting Zillow Flex. I haven't really gotten any referrals. Right. Um, I would say if you're newer to the business, more of your leads are going to come from the team. Right. You're probably like 70% from the team at least, 80% from the team until you start getting your name out there and getting some referrals. Um, when we looked at our numbers for the quarter, it was about 60, 40. And that's averaging the whole team, right? Because we have some agents who get a lot of referrals, some who are more team leads, right? And so um, if you're newer, I would rather you say like, hey, go on the higher side, yeah. maybe like a 70, 30, right? Uh, I'm sorry, 30, 70. So 30% agent generated meaning these are ones you went out and got on your own referrals you worked in open house you went and generated this by yourself um 70 percent team generated you're calling the pawn you're calling our leads you're taking flex right you're taking more of the incoming stuff that's coming in but it's important for you to know this right because now you can strategize like okay how many how do I get access to leads quicker, right? Like if you're doing more team leads, you can say, okay, well, am I getting enough leads from Flex or am I in the pond enough, right? Stuff like that. If I'm trying to go after more agent generated, okay, well, what am I doing to go out there and generate business on my own? Am I working open houses? Am I door knocking? Am I calling my database, right? My friends, my family, the people in my, in my contact list? Am I posting on social media to generate more business on my own, right? Um, or am I investing in any sort of marketing on my own that I'm paying for? Now, when you're newer, you may not have the capital to invest in marketing, right? That's why you join a team like ours, because you're going to get access to leads and get be able to build your experience and build your business and build your referrals and build some capital. And then one day you can start investing into your own stuff, right? So what happens with agents is in the beginning, they're relying more on the team. And then as they start to get some deals under their belt, they start to generate referrals, probably like in year two, year three, stuff like that. And then they get to a point where maybe it's like 50, 50. And then they probably want to get to a point where maybe it's like 60, 40, most of 60% of their business is coming from their own referrals, their own friends, their own family, their own repeat clients. And then maybe they're only relying on the team for 40% of their leads. But just knowing that guys, you just need to know that that's, that's kind of the trajectory that you're on, right? So I don't want people to get caught up in like, these leads are good or these leads are bad. Just know that like, depending on where you're at in your career, that's just what it is, right? Like if, if you don't have, unless you come into this career with a book of business, a huge database, 
of people who are willing to do business with you or dollars that you can start investing into your marketing, you're probably going to be relying on the resources from the brokerage or the team or wherever you're at, right? And that's perfectly fine. We've seen many people build their business off of utilizing the team and then getting to a point where now they can go out and get leads on their own, right? Or invest in leads on their own. Or climb up the ranks and get paid a higher percentage on their, on their commission split. So now the team leads that they're getting, they're getting paid more on those leads, right? Because they're bringing more value to the table overall, right? So just understanding that, guys, it's important. Um, what are your lead sources? And so if we had to break it down into like my two or three lead sources, I want you to jot those down. I would say if you're new and you don't have much going on, Zillow Flex, right? The Pond, which is, you know, Zillow Flex leads as well, um, or any leads that we've had come in, that's probably going to be one of your main sources. Your SOI, right? That's going to take some time to build, but that is going to be something you want to focus on. Friends, family, contacts, stuff like that. Um, and then maybe I would be doing open houses. Open houses is a good way to go out and get yourself in front of people that are coming to you, right? And there's pros and cons, right? But I would look at it like this. Like these are going to be my main sources. Some of you guys get to a point where you're just so busy, you don't have time to do an open house, right? You got like so many referrals and you got so many like Zillow flex, like your schedule's busy, or maybe you're collaborating with other agents on the team and like, like my weekends are busy, so I don't really have time to go do an open house. Um, you can also, I would say, if you want to prospect for listings, you can do that as well. Door knock, call, whatever that might be. Okay, this number is going to look a little bit different for everybody, but this I want you guys to start thinking about this, right? How many leads from each lead source must you generate to book your appointment number? And so the way you're going to come up with this, it's going to be a little bit individual, but I want you guys to kind of get some rough numbers down, right? If my if I'm heavily relying on flex and I don't have a lot of SOI and stuff like that, how many flex leads must I get each month? to hit my number goal, right? Um, let's just talk about flex, right? Like if you book a flex appointment, what are the chances of you meeting with them? Like if you get a flex call, what would you guys say is the percentage of the ones that you actually meet with? Is it pretty high? Say like 70, 80, it used to be high at like eight. Yeah, now it's like a lot of people are already signing with the agents, so it's very slow. Okay, so who's, let's throw a number on it. What would you guys say? Percentage of leads I would say like connections. You talked to you got the live connection, and then you actually meet with them in person, right? You meet them at the property. They don't cancel, reschedule, or change their mind. 70%. About seventy percent. You might have that number, right? Yeah. If they're the way we we may not have a whole accurate number, right? Because you would have to make sure you guys are actually yeah, yeah, yeah. tracking like I met with the client. But those of you guys that are, are actively on flex, what would you say is the number? 50. Yeah. You're only meeting with 50 of them? Yeah. 50%? Sometimes it's a landing free. Sometimes they don't sign the three, maybe. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's good to know, guys. I mean, because my thing is, you shouldn't rely only on flex. Right? Yeah. I mean, and that, that's what that's what I think Enrique is leading to is like that. That's one pillar. You can see what he has up there. And you also have to understand how many agents are on flex. How many leads are we getting from flex? So don't I hope you're making sure that we're not only relying on the incoming opportunity, because then when you also look at flex, you also have to look at the ones in the pocket. Yeah. Right? If you're just sitting in the in the office just receiving flex leads, that's not going to build your business. That's only that's only one. That's only one little piece of the puzzle, right? Okay, so you said 50%. What would you guys say? Okay. So you get the call and then you only actually end up meeting with 50% of those. Got it. The only the only the only caveat with you is you're not taking as many. Right? So like if Mark's taking 20 in a month and you only take five, the numbers are gonna be a little bit different, right? 
Yeah. Um, but I would say 50 to 60% is probably a good number, right? Of how many connections I take, get versus how many I end up meeting. So if we know that, we can kind of start doing some of the math, right? It's almost like appointment set to met, which we have 60%. We can just use that number, right? So if I got to get 20, you know, whatever this number was, appointments, right? We can pretty much call like the Zillow Flex when the call comes in. It's, it's like an appointment being set, right? Whether they meet with you or not is a different story. So I can say, hey, that means I got to get somehow that number has to equal for my for my example right if i'm trying to do two a month somehow i have to get to 20. so that could be 10 from flex like i'm taking 10 flex a month right 10 is probably going to be the max maybe even say eight eight from flex okay i need a book maybe i'm in the pond right I need a book at least two a week from the pond. That's another eight. I'm just giving you guys an idea. And you guys, this is going to look a little bit different, but I want you guys to see how I'm coming up with this, right? Two from me, or eight from me prospecting in the pond. This is in a month, right? And. Then maybe another eight and eight sixteen, another four from referrals or open houses, right? I could kind of start to map out like, okay, where am I gonna get my business from? Where am I gonna get my leads from? Some of you guys may have more referrals, right? Or some of you guys may, like if you're a senior agent, you're working with some of the other agents, right? They're bringing you opportunity as well. But the whole point I'm trying to get at, guys, is I don't want you guys to just be like blindly taking, you know, hustling and taking calls and stuff like that if you don't really have a strategy behind it, right? Because when you don't have a strategy, guys, and you're just kind of shooting in the dark and like, hey, I just answer the phone as much as possible, right? Like that's one way, right? Like, hey, like Steve said, go on as many appointments as possible. That is one way, but there has to be an, a certain number, right? And like with Steve saying going on as many appointments as possible, I'm pretty sure he's like going to 20 or 30 or more appointments a month, right? And so he's hitting those numbers to get him to enough at-bats to hit, you know, his closings. Um, but I don't want you going into your business with like, I don't really know how many leads I have to be taking or generating to get to my goal. Because then how can you hit your goal if you don't, you don't know where the business needs to come from? You see that, right? Then you're just kind of leaving it up to chance. I hope this month goes great, right? I'd rather map it out and have like a rough idea of like, okay, I need to make sure I'm getting, taking at least this many calls from Flex I need to make sure I'm at least prospecting this much in the pond. And I need to, if I'm going to do open houses, I need to make sure I'm doing at least this many open houses so that I can generate enough opportunity to book enough appointments, to meet enough people, to sign enough people to get a contract, right? You see how it all starts, like the math starts, starts mathing. Um, and this is something that we can, it's going to be really individual. So this is something that we can sit down with you when we do our one-on-ones. But right now I just kind of want to introduce you to how we got to think about our business, All right? Any questions on this? Is it a lot, guys? I mean, because I know this isn't the fun part of real estate right here, right? But I think it's important to understand. But I like what Enrique is saying is that don't even think about it from as a real estate agent. Look at it from more of a business perspective. Right? Yeah. Now you know. Now you're actually making a plan of how your business should actually look, right? Hello, you Janet. Yes. Hey, Enrique. We'll be. We're just finishing up training. We'll get with you in. In about 10 minutes, all right? Mind if I ask you again? Sure. This is, guys, this is amazing training, guys. This is this is this 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 should be mystified every question that you have in regards to what am I doing on a daily basis, right? So I would I would highly take some time to kind of figure out what exactly is required of you on a daily basis, and then business becomes really, really easy, right? You just look at your plan, you just look at your it's a simple talk with yourself. Am I on the right track or am I on the off track? Am I, is it a good day or a bad day? 
right? So it simplifies everything. Yep, absolutely. We're trying to make this as simple as possible. Um, okay, so last two questions here. Knowing what I know now, right? I have a rough idea of, not a rough idea, I have a pretty good idea of like how many appointments I need and stuff like that to make sure I convert the leads that I'm trying to convert and get the deals in contract. If I had to just track one of these numbers up here, that's really simple to track on a weekly or daily, what would I track? What's the one measurable from these metrics up here that I can track on a weekly basis that's going to lead up to me hitting my number? Appointments. Appointments? Yeah. Appointments, yeah. Appointments is one of them, right? What's another number you can track? Signed. Uh, signed. Yeah. Uh, okay. The challenge with signed is that that one's like a few steps ahead, right? So Blanca said Mets. I think Mets or appointment set or appointments met is going to be the, the number that I would track if I were you guys. Because that's easier to track, right? Like you may only sign one in that week, right? But you may have met with a bunch of people or you may have booked a bunch of appointments. And so I'd rather you guys track your appointment set or I'd tra rather track your appointments met. I'd rather be one of those. All. We're going to track it all. But when you come into your week, right? Like if I'm trying to hit two, that means I need to meet. How many clients must you meet with to hit your sign number? 12, right? So 12 divided by four is three. So if I know like I got to meet with 12 people every month, I could break that down into the week. Like, hey, my target this week is to meet with three people, get in front of them go through the process with them if i get in front of three people and that's the only thing i'm worried about i'm gonna hit my number that's one way to look at it right but i would definitely be tracking even tracking both set and met set and met set and met because sometimes remember these numbers aren't exact right and these numbers are going to vary depending on your skill set depending on where the leads are coming from but at least i have these two numbers that i can look at to see if i'm on track and so when Jason and I meet with you for your check-ins, we're going to be looking at those two numbers, right? We're going to get away from like, hey, were you here today prospecting, right? We tried that in the past. Like, hey, make sure you're here. Where are you at? It's like, okay, let's just boil it down to the actual result, right? How many appointments did you set this week and how many did you meet with? And are you on track to hit your goal? And if we just play that game, then you're going to know, okay, do I got to turn it up or do I got to, am I right there where I'm at? Or, hey, maybe um, I'm overshooting on that. Maybe I got to put my goal up a little bit. You see how that's a much more, that's a much easier conversation to have on a check-in with, with you guys to just kind of keep you guys accountable to your goal. It's just really boiling down to, and if you're not hitting that number, then we start inspecting, okay, well, what'd you do this week? Yeah. Right? Yeah, and that's what I like about follow-up boss is that let's say you are doing a bunch of set, but then people are not meeting with you. Well, then we can listen to the calls from follow up boss and see how we can improve that. Right. So, yeah. ways that it, by us running everything through follow up boss, then we can see and we can check our leads and then we can go in and work with you guys to see, you know, where, where we need to help you guys improve. Yeah. That being said, um, if you want to push along on follow up boss, there's an agent goal. If you punch in the number, follow up boss would also let you know if you're on track or not. So it is a good way, guys. Jump on there. It's under ad, it's under admin agent. Click on agent, and there's going to be a goal there. You can set your own goals as well on there, right? There you so go. Now going to so after you do this, we can go in there and put that in. Yeah, we can go in there and put our goal into follow up us, right? And so the one measurable that I would be tracking, right, is going to be appointments set and appointments met. Because I can have an agent like who maybe you're not booking a lot of appointments, but you're booking like really quality and you're meeting with all these people because you're getting a lot of referrals or you're just you're really good at, you know, having those conversations on the phone. And maybe you're doing all these extra steps. You're sending video before you set the before you meet with them. You're setting multiple calendar reminders. So like, hey, I'm meeting with 12 people, but I'm only booking like 15 appointments. Right. So my met rate is like 80 percent versus 60 percent, which is the average. Yeah, very there's nothing wrong with that right yeah. there's nothing wrong with that as long as you're getting in front of the people right the appointment set is going to equal the appointments met but at the end of the day it's it's these appointments met 
enough at bats that are going to lead to the deals, right? Yeah. And a good example of that, what Monte said, too. Like, I mean, with everyone, right? From Zillow Class. Yeah. With, with your friends, yeah. because they, whatever she's doing, her conversion of mean is a lot higher. And then as you start understanding these numbers, guys, then you start um, seeing where you need to improve, right? Like, hey, I'm booking a ton of appointments, but they're not meeting. Okay, well, then there's something going on with the way you're booking the appointments. And if we don't have the data and we don't have anything to track and we're not meeting and checking in with you, then you can go months and months and months and not know that you're doing anything wrong. And you think like, hey, I'm hustling. I'm here every day. I'm putting in work, but am I putting in the right work? And that's what we're trying to, we're trying to get to the bottom of, right, with every, every agent because every agent's on a different level. Um, okay. And then the last thing, this is going to be something for you guys to write down is what must my daily and weekly game plan be to stay on track? Right. And this is going to be something individual and we'll spend like the last few minutes. Uh, or maybe for the sake of this, we got like five minutes, right? You guys can stick around and fill this in, but knowing what you know now, let's just kind of throw some ideas out there. Right. What must your daily or weekly game plan? What are some of the things that stand out for you to keep you on track with these numbers that you just laid out there? Maori. Um, <clears throat> so with the conversation we all had, I need to be booking at least one appointment a day and meeting with three of those per week. Okay. So what would, uh, in order for you to book one a day and meet with three a week, what what needs to happen? Prospect. Okay. Um, when are you going to prospect? Right. This is where you can start going down. Right. You don't have to answer everything, but I want you guys to start thinking. Okay. When am I going to prospect? Am I prospecting enough? And this is where you could be honest with yourself. Hey, I'm coming in one day to one day a week to prospect. Okay. Is that enough time to book the amount of appointments that you need? Right. Or hey, I'm doing it from home. Okay. Are you really productive from home? Like, this is where honesty needs to come in, right? Maybe vice versa. Hey, I come into the office, but I'm not that productive because I'm just talking the whole time and I'm going to lunch every hour. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, the times that you're making calls, if you're not even touching anyone, maybe you have to switch it up. Switch it up, right? And so this could look different for everybody, which, which is fine. But the whole thing is like, you have to have a game plan. You have to know what your target is. If you don't know what your target is and you're just shooting the gun and you don't know what you're aiming for, how do you know where to adjust? How do you know if you're, how do you hit that target? Right? And a lot of us go into our business without any, any idea of a target. We just know hustle. Everyone knows how to say work hard. Everyone can feel like they worked hard, even just because they put in some hours, right? But was it putting in the hours to the right things? Was it productive, right? Was it dollar producing activities? Was it moving the needle forward? As an agent, what are your dollar producing? Yeah. And here's another one. Let's say like you can knock all this out in two or three hours. More power to you, right? Like come in wherever you work, knock it out in two or three hours. As long as you're hitting your numbers, it doesn't matter, right? You don't have to be in the office for eight hours, right? Unless like some people like being here. It's AC, it's hot outside, whatever, but if you want to say, hey, I came in, I prospected, I hit my numbers, I'm on track for the week, I'm going to go to the beach today, right? <laughs> go to the beach, right? Do what you got to do, right? Like that's. You hit your numbers, honestly, you won't be at the beach and be showing home. Yeah. Just to be honest, right? I mean, or whatever. I'm going to go have yeah, lunch. Making light of it, but I want you guys to understand that if you are doing these daily activities, you're going to be busy in the evenings and the weekends because. You're going to be showing property. You're going to be going to list an appointment, which that's what we want. Mm -hmm. But it starts with the daily activities of actually prospecting. Yep. Right. And that's what I love about follow up There's no more hiding. There's no more when I sit in front of you. We just pull up the numbers right there. It's like, okay, you know, this is how many dials you have. Right. So that's why we're pushing everything through follow up. Yep. Yeah. So to add to that one, I was just so messing with the, the whole mm -hmm. leaderboard right. thing and you right. go on me. Accountability. Like for me personally, it shows that I've already had three appointments this week. Okay. That I set. Okay. So as of today, I'm not on track, but if I get one more today, then yeah, I am on track. And then now, now the step further, right? It's good that you pointed that out, is now you got to go in there and put what the outcome was. Because if you book three appointments and they were all three no shows, you're not on track with your met number, right? Yeah. So that's where now, like the simple way is just log all your appointments and then go log all your outcomes. And then you can look every single week 
And what I would do, guys, if I were you, is I would spend every either Friday or Monday and take 15 minutes out of your day to just look at your numbers, right? And have that number written down somewhere. If your number's 12 and whatever, whatever that number is, those simple numbers, have those written down. I must book 12 appointments, I must book this amount of appointments, I must meet with these this many people. And then this is where you're now self-managing your business, right? And then when we do a check-in with you, like if you're already ahead of the schedule, you're like, hey, we got nothing to talk about. I'm on track. I booked my four appointments. I met with three. I signed two of them. Like the way I'm going, I'm going to get, I'm going to get my two deals in contract. Right. You know? And so like the goal of these check-ins guys is not to have it be this like long elaborate thing. It's like a 15 minute check-in. It's like, it could even be a phone call. Like that's what we were thinking is like, how do we make it easy? But just make sure that we're keeping that pulse. You know, and then obviously if you have more questions or you need more help or coaching, then we can make it longer. But I'd rather it be a 15 minute call. Hey, let's quickly talk. What's how are you doing? What's your pipeline look like? Where are you at? What's your goals? What do we need to do? We need to turn it up, we need to turn it down. No, we did that at the quarterly meeting. Yeah, the humanize, right? Um, we're coming up on time, guys. Was this helpful for you guys? Does this make it more clear for you? Um, some of you guys may have done this before. Was there anybody in here where like, wow, I never even really looked at it that way. I never knew like, if I just do this number every day, it would equal this many deals, right? Um, but simple guys, simple, simplify to multiply is, is the name of the game here. Um, that's all I got for you guys. Let's clap it up.